Welcome to Lato's Law 10th Anniversary Special. Here's Steve Lato. Welcome to my 10th Anniversary Special here on YouTube. This is a video where I'm going to cover a lot of ground. So please forgive me if it's longer than normal. But I think I've been here for 10 years. I think I can get one long video in, right? <laughs> so here's the deal. I was poking around on the internet the other day. And I saw that I had been uh, on YouTube since March 31st, 2014. And I noticed that about a month ago, and I'm like, whoa, that's 10 years. That's a, that's a lengthy time for you to be on, uh, on YouTube. I was unaware that it had been 10 years. Now, I've not been doing this show, Lato's Law, for the full 10 years. I've been doing it for quite some time, but I want to tell you some of the stories behind all of this and uh, answer a lot of questions. And yes, I will explain what happened to the epilogue in Crazy Town, uh, so we'll get there too. But just to let you know, first of all, history-wise, I started out doing a podcast, an audio-only podcast called Lato's Law, and I was uploading that to like iTunes and Podbean and Google Play and Stitcher and, and things like that. And it was doing okay, and at the time I was writing for Jalopnik, and so I was putting up podcasts maybe once a week or so about Lemon Law and other legal issues, and somewhere along the line, uh, a friend of mine said, hey, Steve, you should film those and put the videos up on YouTube. And I said, why? And he said, because people watch uh, things like that on YouTube. I said, really? I don't. <laughs> he goes, don't, just try it. So I went out and bought a GoPro camera, and I experimented with it. And so one of the things that I'm going to show you right now, this is an exclusive to this video, is I found the first video I ever shot. And I never posted it. I never uploaded it. I simply did it as a way to figure out if I could, in fact, shoot something that would be relatively relevant on some level. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a piece of this right now for you. I'm not sure how much of this I can stand, but because <laughs> you guys have stuck with me for 10 years, I'm going to play it for you. And what this is, is I shot this with a video camera, uh, and I was experimenting with, with what it's going to look like, what it's going to sound like, how I was going to look on camera, and so on. And uh, it, was, it was this prototype, this, uh, this pilot show that convinced me that I could do it, although I did not use this exact one. So here we go. So you'll notice, first of all, I put up a title card, Lemon Law, Steve Lato. Hey. And then? Hi, boom. my name is Steve Lato. I'm an attorney, and I've been practicing law in the state of Michigan for 23 years, specializing in Lemon Law. I also write frequently for Jalopnik's sub-blogs, Opposite Lock and Car Buying. I wrote a book called The Lemon Law Bible. I've written books about cars, like the Chrysler Turbine Car and the Tucker. So all I do is law and cars. So today we're going to talk about an overview of the lemon law, how to figure out if you might have a lemon and what to do if you have a lemon. So first of all, keep in mind that all now, 50 states... Have I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> the sound isn't bad. The, uh, the, the appearance is kind of off. I didn't have any lights yet, so I did this in front of an open window with the sun. This is, this is natural sunlight. Uh, it does make me look a little harsh. I'm not too crazy about the look, but eh, you know, I thought this is not bad for a first shot with no script got lemon laws and they are pretty much the same from state to state with some minor differences. The key is that you have a brand new car or truck that's been in the <laughs> shop a bunch of times or a bunch of days and has not been repaired. And you'll notice of course I'm putting up on screen the uh, the little subtitles and so on. Uh, I got rid of that later on because I realized that people can actually hear me talking so there you go. <laughs> the number of days and the number of repair visits required will change from state to state. But in most states, it's similar to Michigan's, where it's four times or 30 days. So the way that works is your car is in the shop four times for a substantial defect, and it cannot be repaired. Or it's in the shop 30 days in the first year of ownership, and it cannot be repaired. Okay, I'm going to cut it right there. I can't watch much more of this. It's so painful. But in case you're curious, uh, this was actually the first studio I used, this room here. And all I did was I had a work desk that would be to my left in this uh, image here. Uh, and I basically clamped a GoPro camera to my desk. I bought a couple lights. I experimented with that. And I came up with something I liked with respect to how it looked. So my first, my first video that went up, uh, went up sometime. It was in 2014, but I don't know the exact date. But I can tell you that the oldest video that is currently on the channel 
is labeled Episode 41, Oil Change Horror Stories. Now, there were not 41 videos at that point. There were 41 episodes of Leto's Law, and I think it was around Episode 25 or 30 that I started doing the videos. So some of the early history is lost to the mists of time, but the oldest video that's currently still on the channel is Episode 41. Now, there were a couple earlier videos uh, that I've since removed, and I've removed a lot of bad performing videos, especially from the earliest days of my channel. So uh, it's, it's not complete. If you go back and dig through my back catalog, a lot of those videos I did pull down. Uh, and some of them I reshot because I realized, that, hey, it's a good topic. It just wasn't done quite right. The oldest video that is still currently on the channel is called The Story of the Chrysler Turban Car. Now, there was an older video about the Italian Hall disaster. And in fact, that's one of the reasons that I was inspired to do videos on YouTube also, was that I, I had talks that I gave about the turbine car, about the Italian Hall disaster, about Douglas Houghton. And I wanted to shoot like a video about a presentation like that and post it on YouTube so people could see it who had never come out and seen me speak. So the turbine car is still up. The Italian Hall disaster, I put up later. I took it down. I had to make an edit to it. I made an edit to it, and I put it back up again. It's up. There's a couple of really old videos also. A video I did about my great-grandfather's poetry. <laughs> Elu Kivaranda. And uh, that's still up there. But those of you who've stuck with me for this long, I appreciate it. But some of you might recall that after I went from just simply having the uh, tombstone, that's what they call that, where you just simply have a black screen with the uh, words on it, I did come up with a logo. And the logo I came up with was this one. And now that's the first logo I ever used. And I, I apologize. I should know the guy's name, but a guy made me this logo. I sent him a photograph and I said, hey, check out this photograph. Could you make a logo for me? Because believe it or not, underneath uh, my arms there, uh, I'm leaning on, I'll show you the larger photograph that's based on. I'm leaning on a Breitling sign. <laughs> and those of you who know, I'm wearing a Breitling watch. I saw that sign someplace, and I thought, hey, that's a cool picture. I need to picture myself leaning on that. And later on, I thought, well, I bet I could crop out the top part and use it as a, as a logo for my show or a thumbnail. And then, of course, if I simply put my name across where it says Breitling, I could, I could uh, use that image. And so a gentleman made me that. And then I did update the image every year or so. So I went from that one to this one. Uh, and again, my friend dropped in the background. Now, here's the thing. I used to wear headphones, big headphones, when I was doing my audios. And I kept them on for the first season or two of the videos as well. And then I realized later on, I'm like, hey, this microphone ain't moving. So as long as I don't move too much, I think I'll be okay. So <laughs> I stopped wearing the headphones. <laughs> but there you go. And then, of course, the third one was the maroon shirt. Less of a smile, a little more serious. Got the blue books behind me now and a couple cars. Got that going for me. Uh, and then, of course, I went with the thoughtful pose a year later. Uh, and there's that one. And again, a few more cars behind me and a typical backdrop. Uh, but those are the thumbnails from years one through four. And I think it was around then that uh, my good friend Jane Chaika made me this this particular logo, which I love. In fact, it's on the shirt right here. Uh, and that's a masterpiece. I absolutely love that piece of work right there. My friend Jane Chaika did that for me. So make sure that you uh, make sure that you know that because I got to give credit where credit is due. I also do have uh, this photograph to show you uh, where I had the beard. <laughs> now, this was before I was doing videos every single day. So I could get away with a period of time between videos. And so I didn't care for the beard. But I've had people tell me that they enjoyed the beard, they liked the beard. I'm like, you know something? I never got used to it. I spent my entire life with no beard. I had the beard for about six months, didn't care for it, shaved it off, and, and it's, just, it's just a piece of my past now. But every now and then I've got people who say, Steve, I saw a video and you appear to have a beard. <laughs> yes, I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then, of course, once in a great while, I'll wear a suit on camera, particularly if I'm walking by the studio wearing a suit. I'll go, hey, this is a good opportunity to put a smile on someone's face by sitting down in front of the camera with a suit on. So I'm not sure what the occasion was there, but uh, that was, in fact, me wearing a suit. But I did actually do the first few years of my videos wearing dress shirts. I actually thought, well, you're Steve, you're an attorney, you should wear a dress shirt. And uh, I realized later on, I'm like, you know something, just wear t-shirts. <laughs> it doesn't scare people as much. 
<laughs> so had all that happening. And then, of course, I've got to tell you that I've had people ask me about the microphone collection behind me and how long I've had it. I said, well, I've actually had it for quite some time. So, of course, I've got the microphones behind me. Uh, here's a slightly smaller collection of microphones. And so I had them in my law office for the longest time. I had a credenza, and I had across the top of the credenza all these microphones. You'll notice there's a pair of headphones, AKG K240s. I've had four or five pairs of those. I love those headphones. There's also a microphone on the far left that I do not have on the set behind me and a couple other different microphones. But I've been collecting microphones for a long, long time. So that's just simply the collection there. On the right-hand side is a portion of a Shepard Fairy print that I still have, but I've got that in my living room now. I absolutely love that Shepard Fairy print. And you'll notice that on the bookcase uh, down below, uh, a couple dictionaries, including my compact Oxford English Dictionary, which I, I uh, at the time, consulted quite a bit. Now, I have to tell you that it was around uh, season six, I believe, where I met the Canadian robot lady, She's, of course, the announcer at the beginning and end of the video. She's a real person, contrary to anything you've been told. She lives in Canada, and she's a voiceover artist. She's a good friend of mine. I've known her now for four or five years. And uh, I asked her if she'd do the intro for me. She did an intro for me. And then I had all kinds of people going, uh, Steve, that uh, robotic voice is uh, kind of weird. Uh, why are you doing that? And uh, instead of responding to the naysayers, I had her record something that said, thank you for watching Leto's Law, and no, I'm not a robot. And people who heard that thought it was funny. So I actually asked her then to record me a bunch of extras, they call them in Canada, or outros, where not only does she thank you for watching my show, but she says something uh, different every single episode. And so she's been doing that now for four or five years. And of course, she cut the intro and the outro to this episode as well. So she's a very dear friend of mine and a good friend of the show. And what's funny is, if I had responded to the first two or three people who complained, I would have gotten rid of her. But I learned a long time ago working in radio, and for those of you who don't know this, I worked in radio for a long time, is that the people who complain often don't represent the majority of the people out there. Uh, you'll get people at both ends uh, who are so fired up, they'll tell you they like you. But the people who don't like you are even more fired up. <laughs> so when somebody comes out and says, get rid of that fake robot voice, you got to realize like, oh, wait a second. There could be some fun to be had here. Now, also, I got to tell you, there's in 2016, uh, 2016, that I ran my first episode involving civil acid forfeiture. And so that was um, episode 2.52, Don't Drive While in Possession of Cash. And of course, uh, civil acid forfeiture has become a very, very hot topic on this show. For those of you who are curious, I've used three different cameras on this show. Right now, I'm using a JVC. I'm also doing a second shot with a GoPro, which we'll see if that works or not. Prior to this, I used a Nikon, big old DSLR. And then prior to that, I used uh, GoPro cameras, actual GoPro cameras. In fact, the first videos I shot were a GoPro camera clamped to my desk, <laughs> a light here and a microphone here. And the reason I was using a, a microphone at that time was that it had slightly better sound than the GoPro would pick up, but also because of the audio. Now I shoot everything with just this one mic. I strip the audio off and upload that to the audio channel. And so I should tell you that for those of you who don't know this, the audio versions of all of these videos are available on iTunes and other places where fine podcasts are given away. So I have a large audience of people, especially truck drivers, who tell me that they can't watch the videos, but they like listening to them, and they do that uh, and I appreciate that greatly. Uh, I'd also like to point out, for those of you who are following along at home, that I've used two different editing software programs. The first one I used was Movie Maker. I used Movie Maker as a shareware you get with Windows for the first three or four years. And so if you watch a video of mine, it just simply starts with a black screen with words, and then it just goes straight into video. That's me editing on Movie Maker. But uh, a couple of years ago, um, I sat down with some friends of mine. I said, look, guys, I got I to gotta up my game a little bit. What would that involve? And they said, um, learn to use Adobe Premiere. And so I've been doing that ever since. I can't claim that I'm an expert at Adobe Premiere, but I've gotten better. I've gotten better. And yes, I do edit my own stuff. Now, I got to tell you along the way, I've had some help from some extremely generous people. And one of the things that happened, and it wasn't intended to be simply somebody helping me. 
But somebody contacted me and said, hey, are you familiar with Sam Crack? Are you familiar with Sam Crack? And I said, yeah, he's the guy who rebuilds the cars. And if you don't know about him, check his channel out. It's the, one of the greatest channels on YouTube. He buys wrecked cars or cars from auctions. And, and sometimes he gambles and he'll get stuck with some nightmare that he can't fix. And the next time he'll get something where, oh, it took a $3 fix. And now we've got a $20,000 sports car for like five grand. I mean, it's crazy. And someone told me, they said, hey, Steve, he's having trouble with his pizza car. Another story altogether, I talked to him about that, and then he said he's going to buy a salvaged, uh, excuse me, he's going to buy a, a, a Lemon Law buyback automobile. And I said, that's not a good thing to do. And he and I exchanged emails, and he goes, why don't you come on my show and, and um, talk about that? And so I went on his show, we talked about that, I sat in my studio, he sat in his studio, and then he put the video up on his channel. And it was entitled, I Should Not Have Bought a Lemon Car. Lemon Law Attorney Schools Me. <laughs> schools Me. And the reason I have to point this out is that after that video went up, the audience on my channel, my subscription base, doubled. Doubled overnight. Literally. My, 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 you can see the graphs and stuff. It goes, like, like oh, oh, there's, there's the Sam Crack video. I can't thank him enough, but I did send Sam a note and said, hey, Sam, 10-year anniversary of my show is coming up. Uh, is there any chance I could get you to record something really quick just to say hello? You know, when I was first connected with Steve Lato, it was during a time I was going through a few legal troubles with some you know, small takeout pizza joint. But at the same time, I was actually interested in buying a Lemon Law buyback car at a steep discount. Steve told me, if they couldn't fix it the first four times, what makes you think they can fix it now? Since that conversation, I've bought a few dozen more cars that people have deemed lemons. And well, you're kind of right about the part where they don't work very well. That's why I like to tune in, Steve, because I like a differing opinion, and I like just to hear different angles on some of these popular stories. And I really appreciate how you don't throw any spin in there. As a matter of fact, people say that Steve's opinion lacks so much spin, he went out and bought an old Viper to compensate. Now, that was a terrible Viper joke that probably didn't land very well, but I congratulate you, Steve, on 10 years. I wish you another happy and healthy decade forward, and I'll catch you on your next upload. So Sam sent that along. I greatly appreciate it. Again, check out Sam's uh, channel. It's unbelievable, the stuff he does and the stuff he gets himself into. He bought a wrecked Viper at one point that had been submerged in salt water. And I saw him taking the engine apart, and it gave me the willies because I've got one. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm scared to check the oil on the thing because it's, so, it's such an imposing engine. So that's Sam. Then, a little while later... Ed Bolian from VinWiki contacted me and he said, Steve, you tell a lot of stories on your channel. Would you like to come down and tell some stories on my channel? I said, I'd love to. So we talked a little bit, made a, you know, made a schedule for it, and I drove down to where he is. He's in Georgia. He's got a studio. And uh, he goes, uh, you know, we can record as many as you have. And uh, he didn't understand what that meant, but <laughs> we recorded 11 videos. And I said, you know, dude, I got stories. If you got time and you got a camera, wind me up and let me go. So we recorded 11 videos, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We went out to lunch in his Lamborghini. First time I've ever had a ride in a Lamborghini, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and so we shot 11 videos. And the cool part was he said, look, I'm just going to take these videos and spread them out. So he put up one video per month for basically the next year. And... Every single time he put out a video, I'd see a big spike and I'd get comments from people saying, Steve, I found you because of Vin Wiki and Ed Bolian. I saw the video you did about the turbine car or the video you did about the Tucker or the video you did about this or towing or whatever. And it was unbelievable. The response I got, again, Ed Bolian and Vin Wiki, extremely instrumental in driving the growth of my channel. And so I sent a note to Ed and said, hey, Ed, it's been 10 years. <laughs> Any chance you can sit down really quick and shoot something for me? 
Happy anniversary, Steve. Congratulations on 10 amazing years of delivering quality content on YouTube. It's crazy to imagine just how far the platform has come. We were a few years behind you in getting started, but you've made almost 2,500 videos, gotten almost a quarter billion views, and you're just about to pass 500,000 subscribers. I'm proud of you. I appreciate your friendship, your support of Vinwiki, the collaborations you've done, like coming here to tell stories. I can't wait to have you back soon. But seeing your amazing knowledge of the wing cars, turbine cars, and obviously everything in the legal field. It's been a huge value to me, and I know to so many viewers as well. So thank you very much, Ed. I appreciate that. And again, I would not be where I am today were it not for uh, Ed's generosity and Vin Wiki. And I told him, I said, I don't come back down and tell more stories. I've got, oh, I've got more. I've got more. <laughs> so in case you're curious, on my channel, on my channel, the top 10 videos, I'm going to count them down from 10 Woman buys car and Hertz grabs it. 1.2 million views. Number nine, I'm being sued. Welcome to Crazy Town. We'll talk about the epilogue in just a second. Uh, number eight, Dave Ramsey hit with a $150 million lawsuit. Seven, clerk denied time off, quits. Entire town shuts down. <laughs> uh, someone built a house on his land without his permission. Five, pry the GPS tracker off your car. And that was episode 6.128. Number four, city loses immunity defense due to genius legal move. Number three, police arrest 10-year-old girl for picture she drew. Number two, which had 2.3 million views, you were right. And that was the video I did where the police actually pulled over, uh, in essence, an armored car and just took the money. And people have been saying all along, why? Can't they just pull over armored cars and take the money and say, prove to us the money's innocent? Well, you were right. And the number one video on my channel, when can the police search your car at the roadside? Episode 3.44, which has 2.89 million views. 2.89 million, million views. Unbelievable. And uh, I double-checked this. These numbers change daily. But as of the last moment I checked, uh, I've got 488, 489,000 subs, something like that. It'll be a little bit over that probably by the time this airs because I am recording this. And uh, in case you're curious, I do have another channel, which I call The Vault. And The Vault, of course, is where I put a lot of backup stuff and I also tell stories that are off topic. If you don't know about that, check it out, Steve Leto Vault. And I got to tell you that the podcast, which is what I started out doing originally, just the audio podcast on iTunes, as of right now, has now over 10 million downloads to date for a podcast that's huge. Now, <laughs> wasn't my primary purpose <laughs> in shooting all these videos, but it just turns out that it's 10 million downloads to date. And as of right now, at the rate we're going this year, I'm on pace for 4 million downloads in one year. So a couple things I should also mention before we go, one of which is in the old days, I had a long form intro where I used to actually say, I'm Steve Leto, Lemon Law and Attorney, practicing law for 23 years now, or whatever the day was. Um, and, uh, my, and I've written about it, blah, blah, blah. I, I had this whole long intro I used to do. And I um, <laughs> don't know why, I just did it. But <laughs> I got to tell you that I did the four-part series about Crazy Town and that is actually another thing that drove a lot of growth on this channel. And somebody sued me with a frivolous lawsuit. It was absolutely frivolous. The frivolity was off the charts. And so I got this frivolous lawsuit. I got served with it. I was so ticked off. I sat down and shot a video where I said, I just got served with a frivolous lawsuit. I'm going to defend it. I'm going to get it thrown out of court. And then I'm going to post these videos. And I shot four videos over the life of that lawsuit. And sure enough, when my attorney, yes, I hired an attorney, when my attorney got it thrown out, I shot the last video and then uploaded them one at a time, about a week apart, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode four. Keep in mind that I shot them and posted them, and I shot episode four. In it, I said, I am going to go after the attorney who filed this frivolous lawsuit because you're not supposed to file frivolous lawsuits. And I had a lot of people ask me since then, going, Steve, did you ever do that? How come you never posted like an epilogue to explain what happened? And I, I think I even said I was going to post an epilogue. I'll, I'll post something to explain what happened. And I always assumed that I was going to file the grievance, and then the grievance would get acted upon, and then I could talk about that after the fact. 
Here's the problem. I didn't anticipate one thing, and this is the big kicker here. I was not the only person sued. Several other people got sued also. A couple of them were friends of mine. They all got dragged into this frivolous lawsuit, and and I'm not going to get heavily into the details of the lawsuit other than to say, on some level, I felt they were unfairly dragged into my lawsuit. So before I filed any grievances or requests for investigation, technically what it's called, I called and spoke to the other people and said, I want to grieve this attorney who filed this frivolous lawsuit. And one of them, that is the other people, said to me, Steve, I I don't want to get involved in that. I said, why not? And they said, I'm sick and tired of this nonsense. It was a waste of time. It was a waste of money because I had to hire an attorney. And as a result, I don't want to go through more of this BS. What's going to happen? They're probably going to have a bunch of hearings, make us testify. I'll get cross-examined. And then what's going to happen? She'll get her wrist slapped, right? I said, well, I don't know, you know, but he, so I spoke to the other people and at least two of them expressed some displeasure with the idea. And so I thought to myself, well, I could do it. It would make me feel better. But if these people got dragged into the first time, do I really want to get them dragged into it a second time? And so I said, you know something, I'm not going to do it. And then, of course, people start asking me, Steve, when are we going to get the epilogue? And I'm like, wait a second. How do I explain this? How do I explain this? So I'm not really sure what I could have done other than that. But I thought it was the best at the time, the best action at the time, to not file it. So in my mind, the attorney who signed that pile of garbage that got filed as a lawsuit against me, uh, she dodged a bullet. And... You know, once in a while you get lucky, things like that happen. But I will tell you that by not telling that story until now, if anybody had told her, by the way, this guy's got it out for you, he's talking about grieving you, up until now, she's thought, boy, he's going to grieve me one of these days. So if nothing else, I may have made her worry just a little bit. So that's going to wrap it up. But I do want to end with one quick note. And I got a postcard here from a gentleman who wrote to me, and I get postcards and emails like this periodically. And this is actually something that I'm very proud of. And the postcard uh, is from New Hampshire. And it says, Steve, congratulations on the upcoming 10-year anniversary. I've been watching for years, and just recently, I got into law school here in New Hampshire. He says, uh, I received a scholarship that will cover 90 percent of my tuition. Your videos have propelled me down this path. And he signed it. And I've gotten notes from people who've said to me that they watched my videos and it interested them in the law. And I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who said, Steve, until I saw you talk about the law, I thought attorneys were scary. I was scared of attorneys. They frightened me. (laughs) And that's true. I mean, there are professions out there that you don't want a lot of attorneys in your life, right? That's usually a sign of something going wrong. Uh, but, but many people have this image that like, oh, it's going to be bad and ugly. And I've had a lot of people say, Steve, I see you as a regular guy talking about the law. You appear to have some sense of humor um, and you make the law understandable. And, and I've had people say, Steve, what is your show about? How would you classify it? And I say, well, I'm an attorney. And I try to explain the law in plain English. And so the starting point for that every day is stuff in the news generally. I look at news stories that have a legal angle, and I talk about them in plain English. And so if people find that I make the law more approachable, that's good. I don't want people scared of the law. And so I didn't set out to do that to become some kind of ambassador for the law or anything. But I get that feedback from time to time. So this was a card from Brian. Thank you very much. But I get comments like that quite often. Quite often, and I think that's a good thing. So it's been 10 years since I first put something up on YouTube, uh, and and here we are. We'll see how it goes for the next 10. I hope that answers most of your questions. If not, questions and comments go below. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law 10th Anniversary Special. We'll do this again in 10 years. Meanwhile, do not taunt Happy Fun Ball.